Okay, a whole bunch of bulbs. What's so special about them? Well, they're all 800 lumens in the box. The Switch 60 bulb, uh, a Philips bulb, a Cree bulb, uh, another Philips bulb, uh, this one's slightly different, it's 3000 Kelvin, and of course the uh, good old standby incandescent lamp. Now, uh, you would think, of course, you go into a store, you buy an 800 lumen bulb, you're going to be uh, good to go. They're all the same, same light, same output. Um, Huge amount of directionality in the LED bulbs, though, however, uh, on, uh, one exception here, the Philips, a uh, tremendous amount of engineering gone on there. Uh, very clever, and the switch actually quite good. Um, but, for example, like the Cree bulb, which is a fairly inexpensive bulb, has all of its LEDs pointing out to uh, the side. This um, Philips bulb, I think, actually has them perhaps more pointing towards downwards. You can see there's actually just uh, a surface of um, white plastic, so it doesn't create much light on the side. Um, and, of course, the traditional incandescent bulb uh, producing a nice even amount of uh, luminous flux all around the bulb. Big deal, uh, because, for example, uh, we have a lamp here. Uh, I'll start with this test here, and I'll show how each of these bulbs actually produce a tremendously different result. So now you get when you shop for a bulb, you actually have to make sure you have the light fixture in mind as to where it's going to go. Okay, real-world light bulb performance. Uh, this is a desk lamp I use all the time in my workshop, uh, and I've got it... Uh, the light meter set at a distance I traditionally uh, work with. I have often are uh, writing or reading articles about that distance away from it. Have a light meter, so a real, real, real world uh, performance here. Uh, the first bulb here is the uh, Switch 60 bulb uh, with 1,046 lux. Um, now I'm going to skip on switching in what are identical 800 lumen bulbs. Okay, this is the uh, the Philips bulb, which has the remote emitters, the sort of yellow-looking bulb. It also is actually a great bulb uh, with 1,095 lux. Okay, this is the uh, the Cree light bulb. Now, its uh, LED emitters are mostly focused to the side, so the number here is actually about 20% lower. Now, unfair, you might cry if you're a fan of the Cree bulb, because uh, actually it's a fairly inexpensive bulb. Um, for 800 lumens, but uh, in this real-world scenario, uh, this would actually be not a great bulb for this particular light fixture. Now, uh, we'll see if there's a light fixture where this one actually does excel, but certainly in this kind of a situation, it doesn't. Okay, so this is the uh, Philips bulb that actually uh, points downwards. Now the meter has a number one on it. What's telling me is that it's gone off scale. Yeah, it's producing so much light. So I move it to the 10 times scale, and I can see it's producing uh, 2,660 lux which is incredible. Uh, so this bulb actually is really well suited to this light fixture and produces a tremendous amount of light. So uh, it's exactly opposite from the Cree. This is a wonderful light bulb, but I'm sure we'll find out that this light bulb here actually is quite poor in other light fixtures. And as a reference standard, this is the uh, Philips incandescent light bulb, just a standard uh, sub $1 light bulb. Um, it's writing at uh, about 990 lux. So there we have it. Uh, almost, what, 3 to 1, 4 to 1 difference in actual usable illumination out of this light fixture from what are all supposed to be uh, the same bulbs. So uh, let's uh, try a different lamp uh, that where we'll see if there's any difference between uh, which bulb will excel in that one and which one will not do so well. Okay, uh, obviously a different lamp, a traditional uh, a desktop lamp uh, with a, a white shade. Same thing, got the meter, it won't be moving, it'll be fixed in the location, the lamp also won't move uh, during this video. Uh, but, you know, measuring sort of the realistic, usable uh, light uh, from a desk lamp. So, uh, first one up, uh, this is the, um, the Switch 60 light bulb, uh, running uh, 844 lux. Phillips bulb, the one that has the what they call remote emitters, it looks uh, yellow when it's powered down. Okay, uh, here is the, the Cree lamp. Now here, the Cree lamp's actually uh, doing much better. It's uh, 1,205 lux. Um, it looks like it's a great bulb for sort of the desktop lamp like this. Okay, this is the uh, Phillips bulb, which uh, was clearly excellent for a, a lamp which pointed downwards. Now it's, of course, uh, the switch positions. It's actually um, now one of the poorest lamps at 771 lux. Okay, and uh, the last lamp here is our control sample. It's a 60 watt incandescent light. Okay, well, you might be watching this video saying, yeah, so what? Obviously, a bulb like, bulb like this, where there's obviously no light coming out of the side here, is not going to be very good in uh, some lamps and better than the others. Yeah, absolutely fair comment. It gets more complicated, though, and now it's easy as an engineer where I'm really interested in this topic. I can tell when the Cree, when I open it up, I can even look at the radial patterns on the web. Um, and find out this is actually a side emitter, and it's better for some lamps than the other. 
Um, the Phillips lamp, even though it looks like with these great gigantic fins, would be a, a terrible uh, light uh, with lots of directional gaps. Um, as of course uh, people are probably well aware, it's actually a wonderful light. Uh, even the switch light's actually quite good. Um, although if we look at it, you'd wonder um, whether or not it was suitable for its purposes. So it uh, adds another complication to shopping. Uh, one thing that none of the packaging had for any of these lamps was any sort of indication of the directionality of the light. Uh, they all just merely crowed about the uh, watts consumed and the lumens produced, which are absolutely certainly valuable things to know. But you also have to consider uh, how the LEDs are pointed and pick the right one up for your light fixture. Okay, uh, so if you want to see how a bulb illuminates in each direction, you can of course just refer to the manufacturer's website. Um, some bulbs aren't uh, overly forthcoming actually. Um, you can actually plot it out it's fairly easily. Um, white piece of paper obviously. Um, I'll draw a dot here as to where the uh, center of the bulb is. Um, I'll use a compass here to draw a circle, which of course is uh, equidistance then uh, from each point. And then what one can do is use a light meter and uh, measure the light coming off the bulb at each point. And uh, this will actually give a, a graph which is surprisingly close to what uh, manufacturers have uh, on their website. So, light bulb here. Okay, lamps plugged in. Uh, it's probably impossible to see, but there's actually a line of equal distance all around the bulb now. Um, I have my light meter. I can measure, for example, the uh, lux uh, at the very top of the bulb. Now, this is the, the bulb from Cree, which is very directional. And I read 325 uh, on this point here. And on the side, I'm going to read a dramatically higher number. Uh, I will read... Uh, 640 um, lux, and on the other side here, probably much the same, 640 lux, I suspect, or thereabouts. Sure, 624 lux. And that just confirms, of course, obviously the bulb uh, has a very uh, directional pattern to it, so it's obviously very poor for some light fixtures and uh, quite adequate for others. Uh, 450 here.